Begin the current daf Masech des Megillah Dav Zayin. Begin nine lines down the top of the Amud. But the Gemara continues with another teaching from Rav Shmuel by Yehuda, continuing on this theme about uh, making uh, the Yom Tiv of Purim for future generations. Shes goes by the Kazakh and the Cheskel turn it on the Davachan Bishnei who joins with today's daf. Some days we discuss in today's daf are Kabuni Ladaris, which Esther requested that a Yom Tiv be established to celebrate the miracle and Kabuni Ladaris. Not only that, that it should actually be included in the Kisvei Kodesh to be part of the canonized. Uh, works uh, of the t- uh, swarm of Tanakh. Esther Metama Sidaim is a discussion regarding whether we consider Megillus Esther as Kesra Kodesh, which the Gezer was that they transmit to whoever touches it. Esther Bedoch Kodesh Nemra, regarding that Megillus Esther was written <coughs> with Ruach HaKodesh Mitzayim, the parameters of the Mitzvahs of Mishlech Manas, the Tzal Ben, so this Purim, Echel Nefesh is the halacha that although you now do malacha on Shabbos and Yamta, but malachas relating to food are permitted on Yamta. Mises Bez Nebuchadnezzar there's a difference between malacha on Shabbos that's punishable by death in Bezdin, while malacha on Yom Kippurim is punishable by Karas an early death. Tashlumen is the halacha that if someone does two liabilities, one which is liable for the death penalty, and simultaneously he would be have a financial uh, ob- re- obligation, that the capital punishment exempts him from the monetary obligation known as kum lei v'dirab you only get the, the more severe of the two. So that would begin the current daft of Zion, Nine lines down at the top of the Amr. Amr of Shmuel Yehuda. Another teaching from Shmuel Yehuda. Shochlan Esther Lechacham. Esther sent to the sages that um, she said, Kavuni, I want you to establish me as a Yom Tiv, that I should have for me a name, Luderus, for future generations. Which, and she sent this, this was in the second year, which, um, she, although the first year they celebrated, when it came time for the second year, she said, okay, Loma Machem Dusa Yom Tiv. I want you to make this a permanent thing for future generations. So Shalchalah, so the sages sent to her, Kinat my dad is alayna labayna umis. You're going to make an envy uh, amongst the nations on us that the nations are going to say, look, huh? they're happy that uh, they remember our downfall. This is their holiday now about celebrating our downfall. So Shalchalah says to send to the Chacham, she said, Kavar Ksuva ni al dirba yom in lamalchi modi upon us. I'm already written in the historical chronicles of the kings of Modai and Paris, and they're going to see over there what happened to the Jewish people. So it's no, it doesn't make a difference if we're going to write about it in our, in our books and they're going to have it in their books. They anyways know about our, our miracle. Similarly, Rav, Rav Chanina, Rav Yechanan, Rav Chaviva, these four Amaram, Masnu, they were learning, which they taught what we're going to say in a moment, but Bakuli Seydamayid, when the entire Seydamayid, which we're in Megillah now, which is in Seydamayid, Kol Kehai Zuga, when we ever have, whenever it's mentioned, this peer of these four sages, so Chaluf for Rabbi Yechanan, we actually exchanged that Rabbi Yechanan, Umal Rabbi Yensin. We actually mentioned that it was actually Rabbi Yensin. So when they learned that that uh, Samazman, they're learning Mayid, it was actually Rabbi Yensin, not Rabbi Yechanan, but all the other times it was Rabbi Yechanan. But be that as it may, they said the following teaching. Sholchul lehem Esther lechacham. Esther sent to the sages, write me for future generations about this story. So Sholchul lah, so they sent to the Pasig of Mishle. Halakisafti lecha sholishan. I already wrote about you in three places, meaning, as Rashi explains, in three places we recall the fight against Amalek, which is where Haman is from. It's always called the Khalif of Haman Amalek. We have in Ve'el Shemais, we have in Mishnah Torah, which is in Sefer Devarim, and we have in Sefer Shmuel, because that was another time with Agag, with Shaul HaMelech, which was also Amalek. This is what Shlomo HaMelech is saying, and something that is to be done three times, you cannot make it four times. It's only supposed to be written down three times, not four times. Ah, Shemotzle Mikru Kaslatar. Until they found the Pasuk written in the Torah Shemois, which they interpreted and they realized that it makes sense to write Mikhailah Sester. The Pasuk says, when they were fighting against Amalek, says, Kasaif, Kasaif, Zeis, Zikarma Sefer. Write this as a memory in the, in the, in the Sefer. What does this mean? Says the Gemara, they realized that you interpret it like this. Kasaif, Zeis, write this, which is Master Kasim Khan, Mishnah Torah. What's written here in Sefer Shemois? And in Sefer Devarim, because Rash explained, whoever's written the Torah is called one writing. It's, it's in the same book. Zichroin, the memory, is Mashkaz Menabim. What's written in the Prophets, which is in Sefer Shmuel, which is the story of Agav <coughs> and Shal. The Sefer in the book is Mashkaz Menabim. It's what's written in the Megillah, which, if you noticed, we just spoke about Tanakh. Those three terminologies is Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim, which is the Megillah is part of the Ksuvim. But the Gemara says actually Ketanoi. This idea... If Megillus Esther is supposed to be written from a biblical source, is a machlig because 
One time it says, it says, write this, which is Master Kazakhan, which is written over here in Seba Shmeis, which when they were fighting against Amalek. Zichroin, the next terminology to recall is Master Kazakhan, there is what's written in Seba Devan, about that we should always fight against Amalek. The Sefer in the book is Master Kazakhan, what's written in Seba Shmuel. That's Rabbi Shua. So according to Rabbi Shua, there is no concept about writing down the Megillah of Esther. If Allah says, like, I mean, he says, no. He says, Ksayv Zayis, write this, Masha Kazakh Hamish the Torah. It's like the interpretation we gave before. He says, Devarim and Shmois is the same thing, it's all in the Torah. Zichra in the memory is Masha Kazakh Hamish the Torah, which is, that's in Sefer Shmuel. And by Sefer, it's the third category of Masha Kazakh Hamish the Torah, it's written in the Megillah. So we find that this Machlik is of Tanayim. Now, relating back to this teaching, so the Gemara brings someone to be Huda Mishmol. He says that Esther ain't Metamasidayim. The Megillah of Esther, if someone touches it, it will not make his hands tame like all other svarim, which the Gemara says in Shabbos Abidal Manalf, that they made exeda that whoever touches the sefer is going to make his hands tame because for truma, because they didn't want to have the food near the svarim because the mice were coming. So they said that their hands are going to be tame. Megillah says Esther does not have that halach. So the Gemara, the member of the Sabbath Shmuel, is this to say that Shmuel holds Esther la beruch kodesh? Remember that the book of Esther was not written with the Holy Spirit. It's not one of the canonized uh, svarim. But Amr Shmuel, which Shmuel says Esther beruch kodesh, remember Megil says was, was was said with the Holy Spirit. So why wouldn't it have the halach of a sefer? Says so the Gemara, yeah, Nemre was said beruch kodesh likres to read it, but they never leaks, uh, but it wasn't said to write it. So it doesn't have the kedusha of a sefer. Which Tracy says it sounds like that you're allowed to read it by heart because there's no kedusha of there's no it wasn't said to be written it was only said to be read. Which Tracy says that's typical because uh, uh, we have an anonymous mission later on that says kalal peliyot if you read the megillah by heart you're not yaitza. So therefore Tracy says no when it says like nitnul lich kasev it wasn't said to be written with ruach hakodesh but the rabban it was said to be written and to be read, which therefore um, as Tracy contrasts Hanukkah with Purim. So that the, the, the writing of Megillah is, was something that was said to be written. And it has halachas of writing. It just wasn't said to be written from Ruch HaKadosh. So therefore, it doesn't have the, the Tumma of a Sefer. So the Gemara Mesa, the Gemara however, asks from the following Bryce. The Meo Emi says, Kehelis, which is also from the Ksuvim, from the writings of Shlomo Meluch, in the Metamah that does not contaminate one's hands. He doesn't consider it as a Sefer. Machlik is Beshir Hashirim. And there's a machlik is Mishnah Vesil regarding Shir Hashirim, if that's considered as a safer to be Mitami Daim, it's not. The Yisami says, Shir Hashirim, Mitami Daim, Shir Hashirim is definitely one of the Svarim, and it contaminates the hands. Well, machlik is regarding Kelsum, as Kelsum, if that's considered safe or not. Shimon, he says, Kehel is Mekul Bishami Mechum Vesil. Kehel is from the leniencies of Bishami, who does not consider as a safer, and from the students of Vesil. Avarus, the Shir Hashirim, and if you realize these are from the Megillis, we have Chamish Megillis in the Ksubim. But Rus and Shirashidim, the Esther, the Taman Zidam, they contaminate the hands. So the only one who quoted Esther in this Brisa, seems like no one's disagreeing, says Esther is Metamah Zidam. So how can you tell me that it's not Metamah Zidam? So the Gemara, who done? Rabbi Shua. He's saying, like Rabbi Shua, we quoted before, who says, Zais is what's written in the Torah. Zikaran is what's written in the Mishnah Torah. Sefer is written in the Vim. But the Megillah was never given over to be written. And it was rather to be just said by heart. And therefore that's who Shmuel's going like when he says that Esther is not Metamah Zidayim because he holds like that of Yibishu. Although there are other Tanakh that obviously <coughs> hold that it wasn't Likasim and the it is Metamah Zidayim. Now Tanakh Lunda Brysa elaborates on what we mentioned in this previous Brysa. Shimon Nasser Emi says, Kehelis in Metamah Zidayim. Why is Kehelis not Metamah Zidayim? Well, what's wrong? It's one of the Chamesh Megillahs. Why is it not Metamah Zidayim? The Shachach Pater Shalom says, it's the wisdom of Shalem Amalek. It was written by an author great person, a great tzaddik, but it's not, it's not, it's not Baruch HaKadosh, it's the wisdom of Shlema. So, if that's the case, Amalek, they said to him, what, Bechizu Bavad Amar? If this is just his wisdom, you think that's all he said? Well, the Quran, but the Pesach said, Malachim Aleph, he damaged Shleishas Aleph Mashal. He said, 3,000 parables, and since he didn't write them all, Rashi explains the Gemara's question, that obviously, what he did write, was Baruch HaKadosh. Never Kailas is not just Stam, his like, Pithy wisdom and these sayings and his teaching. This is Ruch HaKadosh. But it says the Pasuk Mishlei, I'll tell you about the Bible. Don't add on this word. Which the Gemara wonders, my Bible, why do you need another Pasuk? Because if you're going to say, You're right. He said a lot of Torah. He said a lot of wisdom. 
but the ebay if he wants to ichter he'll write it down be with the ebay and if he doesn't want to lay ichter he won't write it down but maybe ultimately what he did <coughs> write down to tell us was just his his parables and not from Akadosh Baruch Hu. no that's what Tashmah bring the passage that says I'll tell you something about the now add on to his words the fact that he did add on obviously that it's not his own is from Ruch Hakadosh and therefore that's why they disagree with him and they hold it no. It's not his own wisdom. Achilles is from Hashem, and therefore it is Matamis that. Similarly, Tanya in the Brisa regarding the theme that we said, if he says Esther Bedrach Hakodesh If we mentioned this idea before, that Esther was said Bedrach Hakodesh. Question was it Likrois or Lichte? But it was, it was definitely divinely inspired. The scroll, the story of Megillah that we read every single Yom Tov, and the Gemara brings many different sources to prove this point that it was definitely written Bedrach Hakodesh. Krishna it says in the pasuk by Yom Ha'am Belibay. Haman said in his heart, he said to himself that, oh, who could it be that he means? Now, how did the writers of the Megillah know what he said in his heart to himself? It must have been that there was a Ruach HaKadosh that was revealed in him, and that's how they knew what he was saying to himself. Rekiva brings a different source. He says, I'll tell you, Esther, Ruach HaKadosh, you know I know Esther was written Ruach HaKadosh. Shnurik, it says in the positive, the Esther, Esther found favor in the eyes of Baruch HaTzor. You know the Stitzak Bayanim, how, how, who she found favor by? Obviously, that it was with, with the Holy Spirit that they knew that this was what happened and therefore they, they wrote this down. Remeyam, he brings a different source. He says, Esther B'dach HaKadosh, Esther was written with the Holy Spirit. Shemek, it says in the passage, that it became known to Mordechai that Big Son Meseresh try is going to try to murder Achashverosh. Now, who told us them? Obviously, it was with Ruach HaKadosh. And that's alluded to in the Megillah, whether which part of the Ruch HaKadosh, was it that how Mordechai knew, was it that they knew that Mordechai, Mordechai knew, but be that as it may, the fact that Mordechai found out, must have been Ruch HaKadosh, and that's how he knew that they were trying to kill Achashverosh, and so you see that there's an element of Ruch HaKadosh over here in the Purim story. If you see Ben Dermaskis, I mean, he says, Esther Ruch HaKadosh, and he says, Esther said in Ruch HaKadosh, Kishnem, it says in the passage of Bezal Yishoch Yadam, after the Jews went and killed out all their enemies, it says they didn't touch any of the spoils of war. Now, how did the ones who wrote the Megillah know what happened to the other end of the world? There's no Instagram. They didn't have, like, you know, everyone posting whatever this is now. How, how do you know what's going on? Obviously, that it was with Ruch HaKadosh. Now, Amr Shmuel, this was old Tanoi. Amr Shmuel, he says, Yeah, boy, Hassan, had I been there when this discussion was going on, I would have said something that was better than them all. Because Shunem, it's in the past, they Kimu Bekiblu. They confirm and they accept it. What is Kimu Bekiblu? So the Drasha is Kimu Lamala. They confirmed above in Shemayim, Mashkim Lamata, what the Jews accepted down here, which is that they, that what was up there was the same as here. Now, how, how do you know what's going on in Shemayim? Obviously, because of the Ruch HaKadosh. So Amr Rabbi says, Lukul is Lopercho. You're right. All the Tanam actually have a flaw, a refutation of their source. Levar Medeshmul, except for Shmuel, who is not Meira, the less they that you cannot refute his teaching. So the Gemara goes through each one of them to show how it's not a Rai, it's not a proof that it's a Ruch HaKadosh. You know why? He said, that Haman was saying in his heart what he was saying to himself. What do you mean? You don't understand to be Ruach HaKadosh. It's logical. He's thinking, there's no one more honorable, more significant to the king than me. He's thinking, there's no one more honorable, more significant to the king than me. So if, 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 if Haman is saying, Achshverosh uh, asked him, how do I reward someone that the king really likes? He says, oh, bring him the royal guard. So let him ride on the king's horse. If he's saying this, who is he talking about? Until the Nafshe come up. Obviously, he's, he means it for himself. This grub human. So obviously, this was what's going on in his heart. That they don't doesn't take any great scientist to know that when Homan was saying this, what he was telling himself was, oh, "Who do you think the king wants to honor? But me." And therefore, that's how the Chachmei Megillah figured out. It's not, it wouldn't be a riot that was written by Rebbe What's with Rebbe Kiva? He brought a riot that was written by Rebbe because it says Esther found favor by everyone. That's not Ruch HaKadosh. The Mek Rebelazah. Maybe like Rebelazah. Shalami says, Malama just comes to teach you called Echad V'Echad Nidma Salai Ku'umasai. Every culture, Esther appeared to be like from their country. And as Rashi adds on a little bit more, people used to say, says, oh, she's <coughs> Venezuela. She must be Sicilian. <coughs> she must be uh, from Argentina. She must be a uh, 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 Parisian. Right? Because they, they said she looks like us. Right? So, if everyone was saying that, it's not a chiddush to say that Esther found favor by everyone because they said, you know, this is she's from from ours, and again, it doesn't have to be Baruch Hakadosh. Yeah, Vahad, Vahad, the mayor, and 
And Remeir's source that he said that, oh, and Mordechai knew that they wanted to come. Mm-hmm. How do you know it must have been Rachel Kedish? It's not true. Like the famous, every kid knows this. Dilma Krebchi Bar Abba. The Amman that he says later on the Perak, Bigson Besedesh, mm-hmm. these two officers, Shnei Tarsim Ayu. They were from Tarsi. And that Mordechai, because he was from the Sanhedrin, he knew the 70 languages. And therefore, that's how he knew. And that's he overheard the conversation. And therefore, he told Achishvayr, but it's not a riot that was with Ruach HaKadosh. And Hodger Abisi ben Damascus, that he said that Abisi le Sholchos Yadam, how do they know at the other end of the world? So, maybe there was no Instagram, maybe, but maybe they sent letters from all the other end of the world to Mordechai and Esther. They didn't touch anything. And that the king, and the reason why they would have sent these letters, because they don't want the king to be upset that they're pillaging and plundering. So, so again, it's no raya that they knew it Ruach HaKadosh. Now, the Shmuel, on the other hand, that he dash and kibu bekibu, valilas the pircha. There's no way to refute that. It's kibu l'malam hashikib l'malta, and that must that you can only know that we're ruach hakodesh. Amar Avina, which actually Tzitzit points out that what do you mean? Why can't you ask on Shmuel's pshat too? We know there's a different pshat in the kibu bekibu. Everyone knows this that kibu b'mechas reish mashikib l'kvar in the days of the kabbal zatayr, which was maydor rabba lai raisa, because it was forced on them. So why is his pshat better? Tzitzit says no. That's not considered as a Pircha, because you could you could say both pshatim, whereas the others are refuting and saying it's not approved. Here it's like okay, it's not conclusive, but it's you could you could like both both pshatim. So I'm Ravina. Ravina says, This is what people say. It's better one um, sharp peppercorn. They mulled sunny curry from a whole basket of melons. You have these grapes of melons, and this one small sharp peppercorn is better than them all. You have this klein amoida that's better than all these grapes of tanoi. Now, Rabbi Yisuf Amar Mahacha, um, he says a different source. How you know that it was said Beruach Hakodesh? Because the Megillah ends the Mea Purim Ela that these days the Purim Le'Yavdu Metechei Yehudim will not be removed from amongst the the Jewish people. How do they know what the future is going to be? How do they know Obviously, because of Beruach Hakodesh. Now, Yisuf Amar Mahacha brings from here, which it says there at the end of the pasuk, it says V'Zirchem Le'Yasit Le'Yosam Mezan. The memory will not be removed from their children, which. Tesis addresses what, 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 why, what are you saying better than the first half of the Pasik? Tesis, because the first half of the Pasik, we only see the Yehudim that was in that generation. But Mizaram is saying, for all time, if he quotes the end of the Pasik, to say that even from Mizaram it's not going to be removed, that must have been with Ruach HaKadosh. Now he said in the Mishnah that two things have to be in Adashem. Mikra Megillah and Umatanas Le'avyoinim, giving gift to the poor has to be in Adashem. So Tanya of Yisuf, Yisuf taught in the Brisa, explaining now this mitzvah matan slavim together with the other one of mishloach manis. So it says in Megillah Sester, u mishloach manis ish levi You have to send portions every man to their friend. Which every time you say, how many, how many do I have to be mishloach manis? It gets it. So the Gemara here explains what the chiyav is. It's shtein manis, which Rashi's words are because everyone gets like this on Purim time. What I have to give? If chocolate, what is it? Is it yitz or not? Rashi said, mini madaven, mandaven, types of delicacies. So you give two portions, le'ish echad, to one person. And that's what Rashi explained, because it said, mishloev manois, manois is the plural, which is two portions, ish le'ehu, a man to his friend. So one person, two gifts. That's the chi of a mishloev manois. Then when the Pasuk says, matonis le'avyoinim, and gifts to the poor, it's saying avyoinim in the plural. So it's shte matanis, because matanis is plural, l'shne b'neadim, to two people, which Rashi clarifies. It doesn't mean two to two. It means one gift to each one of those avyan, because avyan also means two, and matanis is two. So those two are to those two people. You don't have to give two matanis to two avyanim. You give one matana, Shalos, what is the chiyam, what's the shir? Okay, but one matana to two avyanim. Now the Gemara brings a story related to this halacha, if you want to get some Mishleich Manas ideas, the Gemara is going to tell us now. He sent him a thigh of a third born calf, which was supposed to be very high quality, the guard of the Chama, and a jug of wine. Ah, so I get Mishleich Manas, a shtick fleisch, and a, and a jug of wine. So Shalach Lei, they sent him and continued him in Bayes. He sent him a, a message. He says, Our teacher fulfilled with us what it says in the Pasuk, that you send gifts every man to his friend because you gave Trey Monis. So those two gifts 
Now, there's a whole debate regarding the next words. Um, the going takes out those words. It seems like Rashi also didn't have it. Can you also fulfill Matan's love yain? Because if he was poor, and he also gave him this gift, was a Mekayim together with that Mishlech Manis, also the Halacha of Matan's love yain? That's the, that's the debate if you take it out. But definitely it was Mekayim Mishlech Manis, because he gave him two months. The Gemara continues that Rabba Shadu le Lamori Bar Mori. So Rabba sent Mishlech Manis to Mori Bar Mori, Biyad Abai, which we know we try to do with Turish Leah. Through Abaya, he sent him Mishlech Manis. What did he send him? So the ladies have to listen to the theme. Let's see if we can understand the theme of the Mishlech Manis, because it's very important. Is Malay Taska de Kashva, a sack full of dates, U Malay Kasam, and a cup full of Kamcha de Avshuna, the flower of Avshuna. What's Avshuna? So they take wheat and they dry it up in the oven when it's still moist. And that flower from that granola is always remains sweet. So I had a cup full of this uh, granola flour and um, a sack full of dates. Sounds like the leftovers when the other guy comes along and goes, what can we give it to the Schwartzberg? Okay, okay, just take take from that one, take and put it in that bag and, and give it to him. I'm like a bias, a bias to that. He says, Mori. Now, Mori's going to say about you when he's going to get you Mishlev Monas. He says, If a villager, if a peasant becomes a king, he's not going to take the basket off of his neck. Meaning, the basket that he used to carry around when he was a farmer and he would feed his animals. Now that he becomes the governor, now that he becomes the king, he's not going to take it off of his head. So he was telling him, You also, you became Rosh Hashiv and Pompadisa. And now you send them like things that common men send around. It's not it's not bakovedik for you to be saying such a mishlag monas. Now actually, how does ihum? Let's see how Mori sends back because it's always you know, what did they send us? What do we have to give them back? So Mori sent back to him Mali taska de zagvila. So he sent him a platter of ginger, umali kasa de papalta adicha, and a cupful of long peppers. You know, like the the sharp peppers. So Abaya, Abaya says, now Hashta Amamar, Abaya is telling, by the way, both of them. So Abaya is somewhere here in the middle telling each one the Mishlech Manas, he might be like the party plan that's saying each one what you're doing right and wrong. He says, Hashta Amamar, now the master, Rabbi is going to say about you, the Anoshadu Lechulya, I sent him sweet stuff. Right? He sent him a, 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 ba, a bag of, of dates and he sent him a cup full of this granola flour. And he sent me sharp things, which is this long pepper. And this ginger, what you have with the sushi, he says, what's this? What's going on over here? What's what, why I send him sweet and he sends me sharf? What's the you know the theme is very important, like we said, Mishlev Manas. That's where the women get it from. It's like you have to know what the message is is being sent over here, what the costume is. You know, it's it's very important. So continue on this theme regarding sweet things. I'm a bai, he says, Kinafki mi He says, when I left my master Rabbi's house, when I was going on Purim to Abba Mor Abba Mor Bamar. He says, Hamsadana, Shank guess in the sea, the it's already full. But Kimato, last time I got to the next Purim party, Kadivali Sheet and Sai, they gave me 60 plates, the Sheet and Mini Kadir from 60 types of dishes, the Akhlibu Sheet and Plugi, and I ate 60 pieces, Ubishul Masraisa, and the last cooked dish I had, before I passed out, no, have a Kali Lay Tsli Kader, they called it pot roast, Uboy Lamechis Soa Basra, and I wanted to eat the plate. Afterwards, which is the reason why you call it um, lamechis is because any not normal eating is called kaisis. So, I mean, they actually do have edible plates, but I don't know if that's what it meant. But he wanted to even eat the plate after he finished. Now, what's the lesson from that? On my body, he says, Hi, no, I'm ancient. This is what people say. You have a pauper that's hungry. He doesn't realize how hungry he is. He says, I didn't realize I was so hungry. So, I got a za. Tava, I got this like an appetite, so suddenly whatever. He didn't realize he thought it was full, but that's good. Poor people that are not used to eating. But you know, another pshat is a well known concept, it's called Ravcha Lebesime Shriach. There's always place for dessert, for something sweet inside the stomach. So although he was full, but something, something delicious comes out, suddenly he starts salivating, the glands start working over time, and therefore it makes more room for that delicious food. Now, the more continues says, a buy about oven. Bit of Khanina but oven. Machal it sounds like that they would be brothers. Machal is the Sayla Hadadi. So they would actually the little taiches, they would switch their meals one with the other, which some actually want to say that that's how the Makamishlah Manas. They didn't have money. 
So I take my Suda, I give it to you, you take your Suda, you give it to me. Which actually, that is the point of the Shalaf Mandis, that it should be there for the Suda, according to the Suda, whatever. So they would switch their meals. Rashi actually says that no, he would eat his Suda's perm with him this year, and he would eat his Suda's perm with him next year. So it depends, the brothers have to switch off. Maybe, okay, the perm's by me this year, and the perm Suda's by you the next year. Amar Rav, the well known teaching. Mechayiv inish le besume be paraya. You can't go through those words. I've seen that too. A person has to become mevusim, which Rashi says the controversial words of Rashi le hishtakir bayayin. No other pshutim. Rashi said you have to get intoxicated, inebriated with wine on Purim. Andulo yada until you don't know ben or hamal barach marchai. The difference between the cursed of Haman and the blessed of Mordechai, which to Yishami makes it a little bit more difficult. You have to get really high, really drunk, really stoned, because Yishami has on, you, don't, you have to not know the difference between Arur Zeresh and Brucha Esther, and Arurim Kalar, or maybe that makes it easier. Maybe it's like you already start losing that already earlier. And the difference between Arurim Kalar Roshan and Brucha Mkalar Yudim, you gotta know the whole Shoshan is Yaakov. If you don't know how to say it anymore, then you're ready, you're Yoyti Chiv of Libesume of Purim. The Gemara brings that also a well-known story, and there's obviously much to be mafalful over here. What's the smichas of the halacha? Some place can, the Rishonim want to say, you see that we fall off this halacha, because we have a story that Rabbi Abzera, of the Sudas Purim Bahad Adadi, they actually made the Sudas Purim together, the two families, the Rabbi family, the Abzera family, Abdi Sudas Purim, and he was him, and they got drunk. Come Rabbi Shachtel Abzera. Rabbi got up and he slaughtered Abzera. Interesting wording, so obviously a lot of drushes over here. Killed him. The next day he beseeched mercy and he brought him back to life. The Shanamali the next year he says, Okay, next time I've never took this poem out there, let's 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 go make the poem suit again. So no no no, not what happened last year. Not every single time that the miracles happen, we're not doing this party uh, again, it's not happening. Again, so some place you want to say, you see from here that the gemara's falling off, you, you shouldn't be Mamosim because uh, bad things could happen. Amar Rabbi Rabbi says. Suddhis perm shach balayla. If you have, you make your suddhis perm at nighttime. Nishbi ins chasidim the nighttime nuch pidim means the the night before the the night of your dal, not of tezvav. La yotzi de chavasa, you didn't fulfill your obligation of having it at nighttime. Nighttime, what's the reason? Because you may mishta besimcha ksev. It says the day of mishta besimcha, not at nighttime. Not yotzi has to be reb suddhasa, but yeah, it has to be the suddh has to be at, at, at daytime. Now the gemara brings a story actually related. Rav Ashi Abi Yosef came to Rav Kahana. Rav Ashi was sitting in front of Rav Kahana. And he came for the shir, and no girl answered the button. It's getting late. No one's coming to the base of Medrash. It's embarrassing that the roof is this. About you waiting to get the shir. One guy shows up. And Mali says, "My time Allah said Rabban, we're, we're the rabbis. Where's 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 all the oilam?" So he said, "The matrid is Maybe they're busy with the the, the perm so the the oilam went late." Amalei says, "Well, how about Avshalom Echel Borde? Couldn't have eaten it last night. What is? We have a shir here. We have a daf. Yeah, but this is something we have every day. Let's eat to see this perm last night." Malay says, like Shmirli Lamar Hodam Rabbi didn't the master hear what Rabbi said. So this perm shach balay be the suddah perm at night. Amalei says, like Rabbi didn't fulfill the obligation. Amalei said to Amalei, Rabbi, how can Rabbi really say this? Amalei, and he says yes. So I told him the Arbon Zim that he learned it from him forty times. But Amalei commanded the Malach Bekis, and it was like to him, like as if he had it in cash and in the pocket. He had it ready, which you know, there's different types of money you have. You have money in the bank, which when you need it, you can go there and get it, but it's in the archives. You don't really, it's not accessible. Then you have it in the pocket. You have it in your in your wallet. It's always it's always available. It's cash. So that's how the learning was that he had it on. Uh, that's how well he knew it. Now we're doing the next Mishnah, which continues on the same theme again, unrelated halachas, but it's all about the aim bains. That there's no difference. Aim bain yantum le Shabbos. There's no difference between yantum and Shabbos. Meaning, as Tais and Rashi both explain, meaning that for something to be initially permitted on yantum, that what's asr on Shabbos, because regarding let's say punishments, there are differences. Well, for example, Shabbos has skila and karas, and by Yom Tov is only a lav. But regarding initial <coughs> halacha, there's no difference between malacha and Yom Tov and Shabbos. The only difference is, regarding food um, malachas, that would be the one difference. Now, the Gemara makes a diak. The inference is, but regarding uh, the preparatory elements of food, for example, uh, the, the knife and the, the tools and all the other things. Zim and Shabbos would sound like that Yom Tov is the same as Shabbos that would be forbidden. So the Gemara said, the Masnit, the Lekar Bihudu, then obviously not Lekar Bihudu. So the Tangle and the Braisa, 
The Tanya Kama says, like our Mishnah, only between Yom Shabbos doing malacha of preparing food. You're the matter of Machshirch, and our says, you'll do even malacha to prepare the things that prepare the food. So the Gemara goes through and explains my time of Tanya Kama. What's the reason Tanya Kama that holds it's only for food itself? Because I'm a crowd. The Pasik says in Shemais, and this is a Pasik that says that on Yom Tiv it's a Mikr Kaidish, O Malachi Nala do. However, whatever is Yaochel Lachol Nefesh, who, the word who says that itself you could do. Who is a, is exclusionary terminology, saying this and not something else. We're just saying for food, we'll live in for things that prepare the food. If you don't know how it says over there in the Pasik that you, it's Lachem, it's who Labadi Yos Lachem, it's for you, which Lachem means Lachol Tzachech, and the word Lachem is inclusive for all that you need. So the Gemara now asks each one, what does he do with the other one's word? It says for you, which seems to be inclusive. It says, no, Lachem is actually exclusionary. It's Lachem Eloi Lachem. You can only do Malachas Echon Nefesh and Yamtiv for yourself and not for an, uh, an, a Gentile. And Lachem Eloi Lachem for you and not for the dogs. So then he goes to be the Gemara. What does he do? Haksiv, who it says this, which seems to exclude Machshir Echon Nefesh. So he explains, he says, you're right, but it's somewhere in the middle. Ksiv, who, Ksiv Lachem. It's who is excluding and Lachem is including. So it depends for what. Khan, when we say the word who, which is excluding, is is regarding, uh, for example, let's say the knife was dented or wasn't sharp from Erev Yom. So you could have prepared it from before Yom. That says, if you agree, you cannot do that malacha of fixing that on Yom. But Khan, when it says Lachem, which is inclusive, is is those which are, you could not have done from before Yom. Let's say, in the middle of Yom, someone was cutting something and they dented the knife. That you'll have to fix on Yom Tim. That's what Rabbi Huda says you learn from Hu and Lachem, which place has a whole interesting discussion regarding, uh, but it sounds like food items itself, you could always do on Yom Tim. But Taisa is Machalik, depends what type of food. If it's a food that's even better, if you make it from before Yom Tim, that could be most definitely, uh, that would be different. And, and that, if it doesn't get ruined, if you do it from before Yom Tim, that, then maybe you wouldn't be able to do that on Yom Tim either. Our Mishnah will continue with the next Mishnah, again, the same theme. But a different halacha in bin Shabbos yom kippur. There's no difference between Shabbos yom kippur. And the shazes the daina is just that when you do it deliberately on Shabbos, you get your punishment b'day adam, which is mises bez, and you get capital punishment. The zeh, but the yom kippur when you do the malacha is the daina because when he does deliberately, he gets karis at min shemayim. Now the again makes the diuk, and obviously that's what every in is trying to say. There's no difference about this, which seems to indicate that certain things that they're going to have similarity halin tashlumin. But regarding monetary payment that you incur together with the, the death that you're liable for, that Zebes Hashem, both of them would be the same, that you wouldn't be liable for the monetary payment. So the Yimamani must say, Zehud etan v'amishra, and the Chonin HaKani, the Tanah Lulun Nebraisa, Chonin HaKani, Ha'yu Eisah, Yom Yikipur, Keshavah, Zat Hashem, He said, Yom Yikipur is the same thing as Shabbos, regarding monetary reimbursement, which is, what's this halacha? Ma'ashab is just like regarding Shabbos, Mishchai b'nafshay padman at tashlumen, you're liable for the death penalty for having been Mechal Shabbos and you're exempt from paying the person that you damaged. So let's say you did a malacha and you, you, you tore uh, someone's garment. You did a malacha of Kredeya and therefore you're chayv to pay him. You're going to be exempt from paying him, which we know is Kim Lebirab, and you're only liable for the more severe penalty. Have you make a problem with Chayv It's also you make a problem, which is a punishment of Karis. It's the same thing like Mrs. Bezdin, although it's only Karis, but since you're liable for the death, we'll put the shulman so you can be exempt from paying. So like Rashi's example is, let's say you light someone else's silo, uh, his grain on fire on Yom Kippur, where you're not going to have to pay because of the death penalty, because with the source actually learned out from a pregnant woman. It says, if, let's say someone's fighting with his friend, he ends up harming the pregnant woman. And if there's no sign, there's no tragedy, I mean, the woman doesn't die, then on the understanding has to pay for the, for the damages of the loss of the children, which has a monetary value. But if she would die, and then he would be liable for that death, then he actually does not get, as the Gemara says, like, the punishment of paying for how much the loss of the pregnancy is going to cost them that they lost these children. So you see the Salacha of Kim of the same thing applies, not only Mises Bezins, but even that of Karth. Now, relating back to the Allah of the Mishnah, the Gemara brings Tan Hasselun, the in the Mishnah Sekhus Makis, that says, Kol Chibi Kreisis Shalaku. If let's say someone is doing an Avera that would be Chai of Karth, but he's getting lashes for it, which is Rashi explains that let's say the witnesses warned him, they said, look, you're doing a negative prohibition, which has karas, but if you warn the person regarding a lab, in court, they're going to give him lashes. A lab, you get malchus, mis bezin, you get mis bezin. So let's say something, you get karas, but they warned him as a lab, which he'll get malchus, so if he got malchus, 
Niftirim Nei Kri Sasen. It actually exempts him from Karas, and the Bezin Shema is not going to punish him anymore because he already got punished for the Malkis, through the Malkis. How do we know? This Shema, it says the Pasuk in the bottom. The Pasuk there is actually talking about when a person has to get Malkis, the Torah tells us don't do more than the, than the 39 Malkis, and because maybe you're going to do more, and Menikla Achichalei and your brother is going to be disgraced in your eyes. But what we learn from this is, Kibin Shalaka, once he got the lashes and he was disgraced, Hanehu Ka'achicha, he already got 39. Don't do more because it's Vinikla Achich. What do you mean Yes, he's considered now your brother, the mitzvah, because he really got the lashes. So therefore, you see that there's an exemption from the chorus. That's the Rib Chanan ibn Gamliel. On that, Amr Biechan, Biechan says, Chalukin love Chabe Rab Chanan ibn Gamliel. But the colleagues, the other Tamil Chum, disagree with this teaching of Chanan ibn Gamliel. So Amr Rabba, he says, Amr Bi Rab, they said in Yeshiva of Rab, that Tanina, we learned in our Mishnah. This idea that the, the, that other Chachamim disagree with Chanan and Gamaliel. We do see this in our Mishnah. Because the Mishnah said, It's when you violate deliberately Shabbos, you have Mises Bezin. This is the Nabi Kadis, and by Yemen Kibur, you have Kadis. Oh, so he says, oh, interesting, right? So the Vim Isa, now if it would be true, like Rabbi Chanan and Gamaliel says, that when someone gets Malkis, it exempts him from Kadis, ah, wait a second, then eat with eat with the other way. And even Yom Kippurim is a chiv through the courts when you get Malchus for the negative prohibition and then that would exempt you from Karas. So why would you say that Shabbos is the Adam and Yom Kippurim is not? I mean Yom Kippurim could also be the Adam because even though chiv Karas, which means Shemayim, but if you give Malchus, that exempts him. So Rav Nachman says, no, not true. That our mission is not a raya that the Chacham disagree with him. Because this that we said that Yom Kippurim, when you do it deliberately, it's not by the Adam. Hamani, who's our Mishnah going like? It's a Yitzchaki. Don't matter that he says in Masechtas Makis that Malkus Bechir increases Lekha. It's not true. You don't give lashes to a negative prohibition that could be a could be warned for a punishment of Karas. And even if they warn for Malkus, still he's not going to get Malkus. And it's learned out from the Pasuk as we're going to shortly quote. It's not like learning the Brisa. Yitzchakim, he says, Chiv increases. The way Rashi explains this is that the Chiv Karas of an Arayas, the Chlal Hayu, was included in the Pasig in Yikra, where it says, when Nechus to Hanafasha, so Isis, which is said in the Parish of Arayas. So, the Chlal Hayu, all the Chiv Karas were included in that Pasig. So, the Lama Yatz is Karas by Chaisak. So, why do we have a special Pasig by having relations with one sister that it says Karas over there? Um, specifically in Parish of Kedashim, Ish Ki Yikra Chesach Chaisak. So that's to tell you, Ladain the Bukhari's Beloiba Malkis. To tell you, yeah, 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 that she's only, because it doesn't mention a lava with it. To tell you that you only get Karas, and even if they warn him, he's not going to get Malkis. Now Rashi points out, I need to also was repeated there in that parasha. That's for something else to teach you the laws of Harav, which is even if you only just touch the general area and you don't do a full, you don't consummate the whole act, that's what it says. But, but the only one that was exception was, was that of the sister, and it's to tell you, this halacha that's only cars and not Malkus, so our Mishnah could be, no one's disagreeing with your Chanan being a Leo. It's just that you don't have Malkus to exempt from the cars, and therefore it's not for the other. Or another approach, Rav Shem says, not filter him in a bottom. You could even say, not like Rabbi Yitzchak. You could even say our Mishnah is like the Rabbanon who hold that you do get, you could get Malkus when you have a Chiv of cars. And even so, you cannot learn from our Mishnah that the Chacham disagree with Chanan yet. Why? Because ultimately, Zeh, Shabbos, Iker is the the Adam. The primary, when you do a deliberate sin, is going to be Misa Bezim. And Zeh, Mayim Kippur, Iker is done because the primary liability, when you do it deliberately, is going to be cursed. I mean, when our, when our Mishnah said Shabbos, it was saying its primary severity is the Adam, because that's the straight Chiyu you have. The primary uh, severity of Yom Kippur is cursed. But like Rashi explained, but of course, if you didn't warn him regarding uh, the Isser of Lav, and you're getting Malkit, he would be exempt. But that's still not the primary, that's like in the secondary type of a way, and therefore it still wouldn't refute and it still wouldn't be a raya that they disagreed with Khanam Gamliel. It just is saying the primary, but yeah, technically, if you did warn them and they got Malkit, it would exempt from cars, and we just wouldn't call it that it's Icarus video. Thank you for anything.